Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I will be doing the analysis for Dashcat 3. So, I will be looking at uh, all the three sections, verbal, LRD and quant. I will also discuss the questions, the type of questions that were asked, the difficulty level of each and the expected percentiles in each. So, let us first uh, get started with verbal. The verbal section I felt uh, was slightly on the medium side. Uh, the four RCs, I think three of the RCs were not very difficult to read, but some of the questions were difficult. And there was one RC which I felt was definitely on the more difficult side. Amongst the RCs, when I looked at it, I first picked the psychology one and the geography uh, RC2 attempt. Uh, but I felt that the psychology one, which uh, had something to do with the criminals and their intent uh, to commit a crime, all of these things was slightly on the more difficult side to read, which I didn't expect it to be so difficult. Uh, but it was not very difficult. It was just uh, more difficult than what I anticipated. So this I felt was definitely on the medium side. There were two uh, RCs which I felt were definitely on the easy side. Especially there was one about literary trends. Uh, there was a discussion about opera. This I felt was definitely a fairly easy set. This was a set I think people should definitely attempt. I came to this uh, third, uh, but this is I felt a slightly easy set. Similarly, there was a set on geography. This also I felt was more on the easy to medium side. Because this also uh, was not very difficult to read. This involved uh, some study about geography and culture, uh, latitude, longitude, those kind of things. Again, not a very difficult set to read. But there was one set about quantum physics. This I felt was definitely a fairly difficult set to read. Uh, this was very difficult for me to understand and even to read. Normally, I initially felt this had something to do with uh, astronomy, uh, different solar systems and all. So I felt probably it won't be very difficult. Uh, but this was a very difficult set to actually read. But still, overall, in a verbal section, if you have at least two RCs, which are definitely on the easier side, I would consider this to be a medium level uh, test. This is not a very difficult uh, RC for sure. This is definitely not a very difficult uh, verbal section for sure. Because like I mentioned, these two are definitely on the easier side. If you are now coming to verbal section, para summary was definitely on the medium side. It was not very difficult. There was one para jumble, which I felt was uh, easy. But there was one para jumble, which was slightly difficult, where I thought I got it correct, but it was not uh, right. Amongst the uh, other two, out of context, I felt was definitely uh, hard because both of the questions I got wrong and it was not very easy to figure out uh, which of the sentences was uh, not in the para jumble. So normally for out of context, what I do is out of the five sentences, I try to see if there are any pairs or triplets which are going together. So for example, if the five sentences are A, B, C, D and E, if I can say for certain that D comes after B. Then in out of context, you can ignore both of them. They won't be the sentence which is odd one out. So it will mostly be A or C or E. Now amongst the three, again, we'll have to pick out uh, if there are any pairs or if there is any sentence which is going with B and D. So normally, I don't find out of context to be very difficult because I am easily able to eliminate the options. However, over here, it was very difficult for me to find out the pairs or find out any one line or one sentence which is looking completely different. So I actually got both of them wrong. So I would consider this to be hard. The para insertion on the other hand, I felt was fairly on the easier side. This is something that you should get both two and two correct. This is as far as verbal is concerned. Let us now look at uh, the expected percentiles and how many questions should be attempted. So normally I feel if you are scoring around 36 marks, I think you can expect around 99 percentile. The percentile I think is slightly uh, lesser than what I would expect. Uh, but again, like I mentioned, even though the RC seemed easy, like the first RC and the fourth RC, the RCs were not as easy as they looked. There was definitely some tricks involved. However, the verbal section overall was not very difficult. Now, there are two RCs which are doable. Like I mentioned, there was one with geography and one with uh, literary trends regarding opera. Both of them are definitely on the easier side. You should definitely attempt them. Verbal questions, at least three are easy. Bo uh, two involve para insertions and one I would say is one para jumble on the easier side. Three are difficult and uh, moderate. Uh, like I mentioned, out of context, I found to be slightly on the difficult side and para summaries were moderate. Uh, RC questions, like you expect, are inference based. There was no uh, objective question or no question that can be directly answered from the passage. All of them are inference based. That is why the questions I felt were slightly on the trickier side. Uh, understanding the crux will definitely help you. And option elimination, like I mentioned in most of my analysis, I'll again mention this, why option analysis is very important in RCs. Because in RCs, the way it works in verbal section mostly is, you have four options. You have A, B, C and D. Very rarely will any option be 100% wrong. By that I mean very likely that uh, if they are basically saying which of the following uh, options follows directly from the passage. So if somebody is asking you which of the following options will the author agree, you won't find any option which is 100% against what the author is saying. Normally in these kind of questions what will happen is you will have one option where it is 100% true. Another option where 80% of it is true and 20% is exaggerated. 
you will have another option where 60 percent is true and there is some additional information that is given which directly doesn't follow from the passage so say 60 percent true and 40 percent false and you'll have one more which is say 90 percent true and 10 percent false now if you're trying to figure out which of the following options is correct it will be difficult for you to find it because when you're reading it for the first time you feel there is an element of truth in all the four options a b c d so how are you going to choose in these kind of questions what i do is the elimination of uh, wrong options where I try to find any option where there is any exaggeration, whether there is any additional information that is given, anything and everything which I think is wrong about an option, I'll try to find out. So if there is 20% falsehood in option A, it is wrong. If there is some 40% uh, 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 wrong, then I would eliminate this. If there is only 10% falsehood or which seems most likely to be true and there is one which doesn't seem to be, uh, which also seems to be true, then I consider these two and I try to pick whichever is the closest one. Essentially, for RCs, it is easier for you to find out which of the options is wrong and definitely follow it, your accuracy will improve. That is what I did over here, which is why I think my accuracy in RCs was definitely pretty decent. Now, let us look at the LRDI section. In LRDI section, there were four sets. Uh, this is a fairly interesting uh, section. I didn't do particularly well in LRDI this time because I made some mistakes in uh, reading one of the options in Venn diagrams. And because of which I wasted a lot of time. This actually goes to show how important it is for you to pay attention to detail in LRDM. Because I first started off with the Venn diagram set. Now this Venn diagram set was not a very difficult set. But it took me around 20-25 minutes to actually get it correct. The reason for that is because uh, without revealing too much information, there was one option where the ratio that was given is 1 is to 2 is to 2. But for some reason, I read it as 1 is to 1 is to 2. Because of which even though I solved the set and when I was going to the questions, one of the question, I was not getting any option which was matching. Then I had to again go back and solve the set again. Again, I couldn't get it because again, I was reading it as 1 is to 1 is to 2. So finally, I got some other questions in this set wrong and I wasted 25 minutes, which actually shows how important it is for you to read the options very carefully. Because unfortunately, if you read an option wrong the first time, the second time and the third time and the fourth time, it is very difficult for you to correct it because you will have some sort of a blind spot to that kind of a detail. So it is very important for you to pay a lot of attention when you are reading the LRDI set for the first time. So coming to the four sets, I attempted the Venn diagram set first because like I mentioned earlier, in LRDI I tried to get two sets correct and Venn diagrams is a set or is a type of set which is a fairly easy set. If you know how to represent the data, a four parameter Venn diagram, you have to basically represent it this way. You draw four lines horizontally, four lines vertically and connect the alternate lines. So you have one, two, three and four lines vertically. You connect this one alternately and you connect this one. Similarly, horizontally also you draw 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Again, you connect the alternate ones. These two and these two. This is how you represent a 4 parameter Venn diagram. If you know how to do this, how to represent this or how to draw this, then solving this set is fairly straightforward. It is not a difficult set, but you have to know this and otherwise it, uh, most of the other things follow quite straightforwardly. It is a fairly standard Venn diagram set. So I would not consider this to be very hard, although very few people have actually attempted it, which goes to show that probably people are not preparing for Venn diagrams. So this is a medium set. The second one is a quant based LR. This is a new type of set that we created and very few people attempted it, but this is actually a fairly easy one. This is not at all a difficult one. I think there are only three cases and if you find out the three cases, you can get all the five questions correct. But because it looks different, very few people attempted it. But however, don't worry, you have to uh, at least try some of these questions for you to gain that confidence. So this is the easiest of the four sets. This is a set that you should definitely attempt. The next one was arrangements. This I think was slightly on the medium side. The next one was uh, DI data changes. That also I think was slightly on the medium to hard side. I think there are two cases over here. And figuring out which of the case is true also might take some more time. But in all the four sets, somebody who is able to hold their nerve, somebody who is uh, uh, looking to score say 95 percentile plus in LRDA should get two sets correct. Even though I said it, I myself didn't do very well in this LRDI because like I mentioned earlier, I made some mistakes. I was also slightly nervous. I was panicking a little and one set basically wasted a lot of my time because I was not able to read one of the clues. One of the clues I read wrong because of which I lost a lot of time as well as marks. So selection of sets is important. Quant based LRDI, which is a new type of set that we created and the arrangements. I think arrangements is a type of set which everyone is comfortable with. I think these two can definitely be done. DI data change over a period was slightly tricky. Not very difficult, but slightly tricky. And one more thing I want to say over here is you should know how to represent the Venn diagrams. Don't forget this. This might come handy on the day of the examination. Four parameter Venn diagrams sometimes come in the examinations. I think in the last two, three years, maybe once or twice it has come. So it is 
not a uh, unknown set it is not an unknown type of uh, or a new type of LRDA you should definitely know it and it is very easy to know you have to just figure out how to represent the data in a four parameter Venn diagram accuracy is very important in LRDA set give enough time to solve this set correctly one more thing I would want to add to this like I mentioned earlier is when you are reading the LRDA set for the first time you should be 100% focused you should be super super focused you should not read a clue wrong because as it happened to me this time once you read a clue wrong even if you are reading it for the second time or the third time or the fourth time, you will continue to read it wrong. Because for some reason, that is how our minds are wired. Two sets can be definitely solved in this mock, but all these uh, with uh, conditions apply. That is, you are holding your nerve, you are not making any mistake. All of those things. Now, let us look at quant. Quant, I think, uh, like always, we made arithmetic to be on the easy to medium side. Algebra was definitely on the moderate to difficult side. And the others also geometry probability were uh, slightly on the harder side, but I think this is mostly because people find them difficult. I don't think geometry by itself was very difficult. I think there were at least one or two questions. For example, one of the question which involved uh, a quadrilateral whose diagonals are perpendicular and all those kind of things should be definitely done. They are not at all difficult. They are fairly straightforward. So there were some geometry questions which were easy, but I think people were scared of geometry. People were scared of probability. So if you are looking just at the statistics, very few people attempted them, but there were definitely some easy questions that you should attempt in geometry as well as probability. Arithmetic was definitely easy. Algebra was designed to be difficult. There were some questions which involved algebra and geometry, which involved some equations that you get based on the number of diagonals that are there, etc, etc. Those kind of questions I think were definitely lengthy. So those kind of questions if you ignore also is fine. But there were some straightforward geometry questions, which I think you should definitely attempt and get them correct. Uh, selection of questions is definitely important overall accuracy will help this I think uh, is anyways true but all I am essentially saying is at least in the topics that you are not comfortable with don't make them uh, your psychological uh, or have any mental block because there will be some questions even in the topics you are not comfortable with which are easy that I think was uh, very clear this time where very few people attempted geometry and probability questions let us now look at the expected percentiles for 99 percentile in quant, I think was around 28, roughly there, slightly on the difficult side, but it is okay. LRDA 24, that is getting 8 questions correct. VARC 36 marks, this is for 99, overall is 77. Similarly, for 95, roughly around 9 to 10 marks lesser, and say around 20 marks lesser overall from 99 percentile. With respect to 80 percentile, around 11 marks in quant, 10 marks in LRDA, and uh, VARC is around 18. But even now you can see that if you get one LRDA set correct, you are clearing the cutoff. One LRDA set, if you get it correct, that is 12 marks, you will clear the cutoff. And overall 80 percentile will be around 40 marks. I hope this was useful for you. If you have any doubts, please uh, comment below this video.